What's up guys, Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video and uh, doing it live for this one. Doing some live commentary for this one because this is a deck that I actually have really been wanting to play around with. And this opening hand seems amazing, actually. Uh, I've got Maxi in my hand and I've lost Draw, Paper, Scissors, so I'm very likely going second against whatever he is playing. Whatever uh, whatever old pity mod man is playing. Uh, but also, my hand is very good for going second because of pre-prep plus this. Uh, so, ultimately, it's uh, it's actually really good for me to have the hand that I have right now um, because of the fact that I can pre-prep. Now, I'm holding the max C until Invoker happens uh, because Invoker is going to at least guarantee me to get a, um, a plus one because he's going to summon Rat. Uh, and then off of the Rat, he's going to have to summon Dryden at least uh, if he's playing uh, Zoo cards, which is what I believe is the case. So we're going to go for that. Uh, if I just max seed when he added uh, Takatomborg, which a lot of people tend to do, uh, it's actually just not really correct because they could just stop there or they could uh, just do whatever. They could have like a rat in hand and normal summon it and then just go into Dryden giving you a one for one rather than getting a plus one. Uh, so playing uh, playing max C is very, very important in terms of how you play against a zoo matchup. Uh, some people just mindlessly throw it down as soon as they see uh, Takatomborg is about to special summon itself from hand. Uh, when that's actually just not correct. And see, now his uh, his uh, rat has gone away, and so now I got a plus, one, I, I got a one for one out of it, but he minused in resources in terms of he lost a rat. So that is perfectly fine. Uh, but anyway, I'm playing this uh, Shino Bird deck, which is a deck that I'm actually just like really, uh, really excited to try out. Now, as long as this card isn't something like fucking Dimensional Barrier. Uh, then we should be pretty good to go in terms of uh, in terms of how things can operate. But uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm not too worried about spinning monsters here. I'm going to try and spin his uh, his back row uh, because I would love to special summon Crane out of my deck and then normal summon uh, Aratama uh, because that seems like it would be the uh, the ideal of how uh, of how this would uh, would go. Uh, but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to summon uh, the uh, the Baroness Peacock using Baron Peacock. <laughs> um, so, I didn't open anything like uh, amazing as far as like brilliant fusions and stuff go, but at least now I get to do this and summon my uh, summon my uh, crane, which has a weird name on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro right now. Shinobird Kanagazuru, whatever. Uh, but now what I get to do is, I get since I special summon this, I get to normal summon this and use its effect to search and then get a draw. Um, and so I'm gonna structure the chain links to where the draw happens first. And so, Urgent Ritual Art, that's, whoa, that's actually just amazing, um, in fact. Uh, and so what I'll do is I'll add Nikitama here because I have Izanami, and Izanami allows me to rotate Nikitama out for one of the rituals that's engraved. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, but we're going to activate the power spot here, uh, just because it will give everything a boost. And now I can attack over this. Uh, these will all bounce to my hand in the end phase, except for the crane. Uh, which is fine because the crane will be on the board, meaning urgent ritual art that I just drew is going to be amazingly live uh, because I'd be able to banish my uh, my peacock out of grave that's there now to summon uh, to summon this from hand, or I can banish peacock for peacock because power spot here uh, will be able to add a, uh, a spirit monster in the end phase, which will add a peacock. Uh, so that seems pretty pretty legitimately good. Um, so that seems good. Yeah, we'll we'll go with that. Uh, so we'll set this, and I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get all my cards bouncing back. So it's, I mean, the, that is the biggest problem with spirits in general is that you'll bounce back, and then you'll basically have not done anything for your turn because you keep investing uh, resources into your board, but then they keep going back to your hand. But the Shino birds really just play into that super well because of the abilities that you have uh, with uh, with your ritual monsters and stuff. Like, these being able to clear up to three cards each non-targeting is absolutely insane. Like, it's, they're great, and that's why I wanted to play them. But uh, that's why I wanted to play them for at least one video. I might play them for more, uh, especially since uh, I have other people from my Discord server, which is where Iradium came from. If you're interested in getting onto my Discord server, you could definitely go check out the Patreon link in the description because that is a reward tier, um, is how to get into that. But... I'm going to wait until he dedicates as many resources as possible uh, to his board, and then I'm going to Urgent Ritual Art. So, it's going to be really easy for me to just clear his board and then game him. Like, this deck is so unique in that with cards like Urgent Ritual Art, it just 
operates like a stun deck. Uh, and it's great. It's great for how it operates, too. It's it's actually just really good. Um, but so he's putting Rat back under this. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let him summon his two rats from deck. Uh, his two rat peers from deck. And then I'm going to Urgent Ritual Art on his, uh, on his uh, Broad Bull. Because at this point, he's going to go into Broad Bull. And if he goes and summons the rat first, then that's just going to be amazing for me. Uh, because if he gets a search here, he's going to get an extra card, and that's going to be, you know, a little bit of an issue. Uh, so he is special for summoning rat Pierre from deck, which is great, which is amazing. So, oh, it's from his hand? Even better, mate. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use this, Urgent Ritual Art, Banishing E-Spirit Calling, and I'm going to summon uh, the one that spins Monstars. Uh, and I'm going to use my tokens, because the tokens, honestly, aren't really doing anything on board, and I'm going to be able to summon a monster from my hand anyway. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll do this. This will get a draw. Um, and this way it allows me to actually dodge, like, if Strike was down, I could dodge Strike, because then I'd need Crane. Uh, Crane would be the only card that would be able to be there. Uh, but So I can summon a level 4 or lower spirit. Uh, do I even care about special summoning any of these from my hand, though? Um, because, like... The Aratama, I guess, would be a good be piece of, uh, like, field presence, but Nikitama um, is something that I could put on board and then overlay with, but I'm also going to be able to use it with Izanami. Uh, so I don't even think I care. No, I just don't. I don't care. He's already used a lot of his uh, Xyz overlays. Uh, so basically, I'm going to be able to get a search for uh, Power Spot in the end phase anyway, which, I mean, I could have probably gotten another Aratama, um, and that would have been fine. But as it stands, I've just, I'm generating a lot of cards here. Uh, and now I've got Icarus attack as well, so even if my next turn's play doesn't really stick, um, it's going to allow me to just use Icarus attack on the tokens or the crane that's left over. Uh, there's so many different things. I've already got pre prep so I don't care about uh, the, uh, the other stuff. What I do care about, though, is I care about, um, care about a Nikitama, because I want to use the Nikitamas to generate draws, uh, basically. It's what you want to do. Uh, Brilliant Fusion... That is actually just the nuts, uh, because I can pre-prep here, and then I can Brilliant Fusion sending a Nikitama from my deck, and that being with a spirit on the board uh, is going to be fantastic. Uh, I'm just going to empty these out of my deck, um, because I don't need them there anymore. I want to draw better cards, uh, basically, and this will be able to draw a card. Brilliant Fusion is going to draw a card. Oh shit. All right. Well, so what we'll do is we'll use the Brilliant Fusion here just so I can get my double normal summon, um, because that would be pretty good, uh, I hear. But so we'll send Nikitama from deck and Garnet from deck, and so I'll be able to special the uh, Seraph Knight. Uh, this gives me a draw for Crane, which uh, I was going to summon that from deck anyway, but this will work. I've got these tokens here, which I could utilize. Must definitely remember to mute my phone. Uh, but so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna summon the uh, the back row clear yet again because it's just the better one to do. Um, I can utilize these two in hand and do that, or I could just use my tokens, um, and which I'll probably just use the tokens. Let's be real, uh, because I've got Crane on the board already, which allows me to use Icarus attack. So uh, this will allow me to clear this and uh, and draw a card. So again, dodging strike. If this is something like strike, is gonna be pretty simple. Uh, that pre-prep is now... it's still live, yeah. Uh, that pre-prep is actually very live still because of the fact that, uh, that I still have a, a calling in deck and then, um, and then we have the, uh, the monsters engraved that it can recur as well. Uh, so we'll do that. So we'll normal summon this, uh, gain the additional normal, use this to rotate out a Nikitama for a different Nikitama. Um, so the one that's engraved triggers. And so that'll just generate a draw. Uh, this is another power spot. It's a hard once per turn search effect, but it does still give boosts. So that's fine. And I look at all the cards I have, but I'm playing fucking spirits. <laughs> look at this. Um, and this is like a slick OTK here, uh, but he's already at 33. So just, just being able to control his resources out of the game uh, just is a fantastic way that this deck operates. I love this deck in terms of how, uh, in terms of how it operates for that purpose. But... The reason I'm doing live commentary for this one is because, I mean, honestly, I really just want to talk about the deck while I'm playing it. It's the realest thing, is that I want to talk about the deck while I'm playing it, versus uh, other options. Now, I don't have Max C or Ghost Ogre 
or a Gamma Seal, although I could draw Gamma Seal for turn, so that's kind of alright. I'm playing a lot of cards that are just really good at going second. Um, so depending depending on what uh, happens here as far as uh, as far as really no zoo things, that's kind of scary. I don't know if I like that. Uh, but so I'm gonna activate this pre prep. I'm probably gonna lose to a dimensional barrier. Um, let's be completely honest. Uh, I can lose to a dimensional barrier very quickly and very easily right here and right now. But I also actually wouldn't uh, because I could use urgent ritual art then on his turn. Uh, here's the here's the thought, is that, okay, Vanity's Emptiness. That one's a bit of a sketch situation, but at least I can normal summon Manju. Um, that's the thing, is that Emptiness would, is normally very crippling to, like, my strategy because of the fact that I'm normal summoning monsters that return themselves to my hand. Uh, but otherwise, this seems fine. Uh, I'm just gonna add another one of the monsters because pre prep can add the spell from deck, but it can and it can add the monsters from grave, but it cannot add the monsters uh, or it cannot add the spells from grave. That is that is the biggest problem that this deck has is that it pretty much is locked into five ritual summons. It's locked into three ritual summons, and then however many copies of urgent ritual art you are playing are the additional uh, amounts of summons you get. And in this build, I'm specifically just playing two because I think the card is a card I don't want to see a lot. But I definitely want to see it enough of the time to warrant it being like really good, like it was last game, where I just get to spin three monsters for no real rhyme or reason. Uh, but for now, if he's able to get his emptiness off the board, I'm able to urgent ritual art at any point during my turn and summon my uh, Shinobaris, Shio, Shino Baroness, <laughs> Shino Baroness, uh, the princess, basically, uh, female versus male. That's the thing is these things are both peacock. One is just Shino Baron, one is Shino Baroness. So one is the princess, and one is the man in charge. Uh, and the princess is the one that clears the back row. So, all I'm really worried about is whether or not this emptiness is going to go away. Uh, and this Icarus attack has the potential to be is super spicy. Um, very spicy indeed. But uh, we will see what happens here off of this pre-prep for one. So I'll do this, uh, pre-prep and searching this from deck, uh, seems pretty alright. Pre-prep is just, ooh, ooh, the perfect card for this deck, hmm, man, cannot uh, say anything more for this other than just how amazing it is, hmm, odd, but acceptable, alright, hmm, okay, so he's playing Invoked Zodiacs, uh, this is something I need to keep in mind. But I'm going to set this Icarus attack, and I'm going to pass my turn. Probably going to get set up for like a savage Twin Twister, but I would be uh, not really okay with that at all. In fact, as you'll find, uh, I need Shino Burn Crane. Come on. Hey, there he is. There's the man. There's the man in charge. He's here to strike the fear. Um, so what I get to do now is I get to Icarus attack. I can Icarus attack for these two, uh, but actually, hmm, I don't have a spirit to summon from hand off of the monster spinner, uh, but I definitely want my stuff to go through, so yeah, <laughs> we're gonna just pop these, um, that's a scythe, and a sanctum, whoa, okay, so he's playing zoo invoked artifacts, had no knowledge of that, uh, does this destroy just card, uh, it does, alright, well then, well, I can't summon from the extra deck now, uh, but what I can do is I can spin these to his hand. Um, so that's kind of alright. Uh, so we'll do that. It's still not going to be the best, but it's still doable. Uh, and so what I can do is I can banish this from Grave, I can do this from Monster Zone, but I'm actually just going to use the cards from hand, honestly. There's no reason not to. No real reason, at least. Uh, and so I can spin these, they go back to his hand. There's arguments that I could have just, like, Ghost Ogred, but meh. At this point, I think it's just arguable semantics. He's winning in card economy, but I've also got a Ghost Ogre that I could use uh, at some point down the line. Uh, and he doesn't seem to have access to any Zoo cards. Uh, so, like, that's the thing, is that Ghost Ogre is really strong against those kinds of things, but it's also really strong against the uh, the Invoked Fusions. Uh, against specifically, like, Merkaba and uh, Raijin, because it just removes the threat from the board. 
of course it does, uh, like, force you have to get some, you have to be forced to give up something to a negation in the case of Makaba, but otherwise, uh, and he does have Raijin, like, as a possible option because he can banish my spirit. That is something that I did not take into account, but Raijin would be, like, the easiest one for me to deal with with this ghost ogre. <laughs> So, kind of not really worried about it, although I am really worried about the fact that, looking at my hand, I've just got a bunch of ritual monsters. That's going to be an issue. Uh, he's doing this now, which I find interesting, unless he has a second copy of it in his hand already, in which case this is completely justified. If he has two copies of it in his hand already, then this is completely justified, because then he can just activate it and then banish the Elaster from Grave. Uh, but it looks like... Looks like that's not the case. Okay, so you're doing this to... You're, why are you using the effect now? I'm going to... That is amazing for me! Why have you done this? That is so good for me! <laughs> now my Banjo is face down! I can flip summon it! Holy shit! Pity mod, man. You're making this a little bit too easy. Why have you done this? Okay, that, that fixes the problem. That fixes the fuck up right there. Because <laughs> that would have been so free if I could have just flipped my Manju and gotten a search next turn. That would have been so free. Okay, yeah, see, he did have a second copy of Invocation. Still, though, then why why not use this Kaiju Slumber first and then use Double Invocation? And then you would be able to make Raijin and Makaba. I just think you're, I think this entire play, this turn, could have been played out a little bit better. I think he might have been overthinking the play. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, because now, at this point, he can fuse three times. Uh, because He could have fused three times this turn. Uh, because of the fact that he made the Raijin first, and then he could have done the, what he's do doing literally now. Played the second invocation out of his hand, recycled a laster, and then added it back and used it again. Um, there's, there's, honestly, I don't see any real reason why he didn't just do that first, because then I wouldn't have been able to stop him from killing me, um, even with the Ghost Ogre. But, uh, yeah, this is, this is a problem. <laughs> Wait, I can't change his battle position? Is that what Interrupted Kaiju Slumber does? They cannot change the battle position and must attack if able. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh god! I didn't know that. I didn't. I've I've known Kaiju Slumber's effect for how long, and I've never actually registered that part of its effect until right now. I'm sure I have some point in the past, but uh, like that's that's actually just insane that that's how that works. So I'm just gonna attack the <laughs> the Raijin. Um But yeah, so now I don't think there's any way that I don't just lose this game uh, because of the fact that I'm not able to do anything. Power spot is kind of important, uh, but it's also a hard once per turn, so it's not really warranted as a three of, although I might just be wrong. It might actually just be 100% a three of, uh, but in my eyes, it's like a solid two of, because again, it's a hard once per turn. Um, hmm. Now I'm trying to think of the specific point at which this entire play went wrong, because I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, really, why are you just you're really scared of, like, Mirror Force, aren't you? <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. But this also gives me information that he doesn't have a trap. Because if he had a trap, then he would definitely turn everything to attack mode and just negate the Mirror Force card with Mikaba. So he, we're getting information. Uh, now the information I need at this point in Juncture is whether or not I'm going to be able to clear his stuff. So I could draw Crane and use Icarus Attack, but then that wouldn't really do anything for me. I'm still losing in that situation. I guess the only other thing I could draw is like, say, an Urgent Ritual Art, but even then I would need a monster on board just to dodge Strike, because now it's double Mikaba. So yeah, this is a problem. <laughs> I don't see any way that I'm not losing this game. Uh, and there's a card that's set, which I find super interesting that he that he's doing that in that order. Hmm. Well, this doesn't do anything to get me out of the fact that I'm losing. In fact, um, I believe you'll find 
I don't even have a spirit on the board, so I can't even do like the cool Nikitama play. Um, can't even do it. All I can do is do this and then surrender, because my hand is a bunch of ritual monsters. Alright. Um, so that one's... That one was a bit sketch. Uh, so now, that, here's the thing, is that I do not know if it is correct for me to go first or second. I'm going to go first just to try it out, uh, but I do not know 100% if it's if it's better for me to just go first or second with this deck. I'm leaning towards going second blind as the better option, uh, but otherwise, there's just not really any information that I have for it. But So we'll do this and we'll pre-prep, because... I mean, why not? Uh, I'm definitely not going to do a calling play because it has to spin monsters or back row to do anything. Uh, but I do have the Nikitama in hand, which is very good for what I need to do, as well as I've got a crane, which is also good, uh, which means that next turn I can normal summon it and then use calling so I can play around strike. Uh, so, hmm. I don't know if this was the right move. I think it is probably just better for you to just always go second with this deck. Uh, that might just be the way that the that the situation is. Like, <laughs> I'm saying all these weird things that make sense to no sense. But I mean, like, this is actually a matchup I really wanted to play. Was Zoo versus uh, this deck because I think this deck has a lot of really good things going for it. Urgent Ritual Art might just be a hard three of uh, because of its good interruption. Um, and like, if I'd drawn Urgent Ritual Art in this hand, then it would have been you know fine because I would have been able to like. I would have been able to use one of these callings, summon a dude, set up the Urgent Ritual Art play, as well as possibly get a Nikitama draw. Uh, so there was definitely things there that I could have done to uh, to circulate plays a bit better. But uh, I did not draw Urgent Ritual Art, or even anything like Icarus Attack. If I'd drawn like Icarus Attack, I would have definitely gone for the uh, Ritual Summon play then, even then, because like it would have left the tokens behind that are Winged Beasts for me to use with Icarus Attack. So like. There was definitely a lot of good removal I could have drawn. I could have drawn Maxi and Ghost Ogre as well. There's actually just a lot of defense in this deck. Um, now that, you know, when you actually start laying it out, it doesn't look like it's a very defensive-oriented deck, but there's actually just a ton of defense in this build with double Maxi, double Ghost Ogre, uh, the double Acres attack, the Urgent Ritual Arts are a form of defense. Uh, even, like, the Shino Bird Trap is in here, and it's, like, some form of defensive line, uh, but it's only, like, when it's in the grave or something. But So I'm going to be dealing with this... Uh, I'm very lucky that he didn't open Interrupted Kaiju Slumber with Terratop, because Interrupted Kaiju Slumber plus Terratop is just game. <laughs> so I would have definitely just lost. Um, but I definitely do want to play this deck for more videos, uh, because I really enjoy the the demographic of play that you have to you have to focus around, because of the fact that these cards are such incredibly high quality cards in form of like how they operate. But at the same time, uh, they are uh, they are spirits, so they have that natural weakness that has you know caused spirits to not really be that competitive over the entire course of their existence. But now you have cards like these that are actually just really good uh, potentially going forward. Now, if either of these is dimensional barrier, I just lose on spot. Wow, three cards! Shit me! Um, I drew this, so this isn't even anything that's really worth. <sighs> All right. So, what is the plan here? We're going to normal summon this. Alright. And then I'm going to activate my calling. And I'm going to try and summon the one that spins back row first. Because if that if this goes through, then this is going to be a very interesting turn. But if any one of these is dimensional barrier, I just lose this game on the spot. Really? Drancia here. Dryden here and not a barrier. But I think he sees the play that I'm going. I'm, I don't, I think that this is just dumb luck, honestly. I don't think that he sees the play that I'm going for here. <laughs> but at least I can still potentially play around strike like this. Ah, oh, shit. I forgot to disable uh, auto chain order because I could have utilized the benefit of the OCG rule set that this game is programmed under. I could have disabled auto chain play, auto uh, chain order. Oh wait, no, auto chain order is not put in. Okay, so they've just 100% just established that as a as a thing <laughs> that uh, that happens. Okay, so scythe, I don't care. 100% do not care about the scythe. Um, so I will special summon a level four lower spirit. And so what I'm going to special summon here is I'm going to special 
uh, another copy of Crane. Um, so I think it's very interesting that you popped with the Dryden there when it really didn't have any sort of merit or worth um, per se. But I mean, what the hell am I? What the hell do I know? Uh, this was a very good card to draw, um, but now I can just use this. Can I clear all of his shit and kill him? This is the thought. Well, no, I can't summon from my extra deck, so actually, no, I can't. <laughs> shit! Um, well, what I have is I have the Nikitama Engrave that I can banish, but I can also just, uh, I can also just use monsters on my zones, but... Uh, I'm just going to use the other uh, peacock in my hand because it's just, at that point I'm over-tributing for no reason, uh, because I'd still have to do that. Uh, so I'm going to do this as chain link 1, chain link 2, and this will draw me a card. That way if it's any sort of big spirit, then that will be really good. Um, really good for me, in fact, you'll find. Uh, damn it! And right after I got rid of the uh, thingo, right after I got rid of the, uh, of the other peacock, I could have summoned the other peacock. That's so ignorant. Well, actually, no, couldn't have, because I would have been getting rid of this or this. Man, whoops. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll get rid of the, uh, we'll get rid of, I need to get rid of the, I need to get rid of all these. That's, that's all that needs to happen. Um, and now this is a card, this is a card. Fuck. <laughs> um, so now I'm just going to, I'm going to lightly wound him. And these are going to return to my hand, and then I'll have another calling play next turn. So I definitely kind of am in this game uh, still, as far as like how that functions. But otherwise, okay. So this, why didn't this let me special summon uh, my Aratama? I'm curious. Or did I just remove the prompt? I mean, I didn't want to summon it. I'm just curious as to why it didn't. It doesn't seem to have let me. <laughs> um. I could just be wrong. Uh, but now, so the the Sheena Bird Calling is live next turn. I'm not dying, uh, because I'm going to have access to four tokens uh, that are all in defense. The only way I could die is Kaiju Slumber, but if he had Kaiju Slumber, he probably would have activated it last turn, because then it would have just been outright no TK that turn. So there's things there. Now I need to figure out what his hand is as far as... As far as like uh, zoo stuff, because I think he has like a whip tail, and if he has a whip tail, that means he has another zoo play line. Uh, but that means like the most I'm gonna be dealing with is Gaga Samurai. Yeah, he did add a whip tail, and that's why I bounced the Dryden. Um, well, I bounced the Dryden because it's just the better card to bounce. Like I can attack over the artifact uh, scythe. Like there's no reason for me to leave Dryden in defense mode or any of the other two Xyz monsters and just attack over anything but the scythe because the scythe is gonna go into his hand if I had bounced it. So like there's there's no reason, <laughs> literally none, for me to do uh, to do the other playline. Man, this video is getting almost to uh, 30 minutes in length. And so now here's a reckless magic circle or magical meltdown, if you will, which means that he has to either normal summon a laster, which he's choosing to do, or summon his whip tail and go into tiger mortar for a zoo playline. And so I think that this is very good for me. Because he can, yeah, he can banish my shit from grave, but I've got multiple things that I can play with as far as like, as far as the uh, as the play lines that I've got. And this was very obviously the card that he drew for turn, or else it would have been activated last turn for deck thinning purposes. So I shouldn't have to worry about anything else other than a whip tail and two other cards that are in his hand that are just chilling and doing really nothing. And so he's able to summon his Makaba here and return his Alaster, but I'm gonna be able to play around this Makaba if if this stays on board, um, or I could just, like, let it be negated, I could just throw the Aratama out there to get negated by it. Um, so there's actually that. Yeah, I think this is really good for me. I think I just get this one out of principle. And I've got all these for ritual, uh, summon tributes as well. Yee, power spot. Um, power spato. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll normal summon Aratama here, and I'm just going to literally throw Aratama out there and hope that it gets negated. Um, like, he doesn't seem to be playing Brilliant Fusion in his build, I don't know how he would have room for it with the Kaijus and the Artifacts. So he's playing Zodiac, Invoked, Artifact, Kaiju. Well, well, well. Alright, so what I've got access to here is I can get 
the Nikitama, and I can make Power Spot an option. Um, you can return up to three monsters, so I don't even have to. It's not even a, it's not even mandatory. Uh, so that is definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. I can activate this, and I'm going to. I can activate this, and I'm going to use one of these and the Nikitama, so that I get a draw. And the power spot is going to make my things pretty large. So yeah, we're going to summon this. I'm going to use this as a, as one of my requirements, and then I'm going to use the uh, Nikitama from hand, so that I can then use Nikitama, and this is not going to activate. Uh, because I, why would I activate it when it's just going to immediately get banished? There's no need. <laughs> um, okay, so he's going to use the Makaba here to get rid of my Nikitama, which I'm fine with, because now, as long as he does not have two Alasters in his hand, I win this game. Uh, so this is this is the kind of this is the kind of nonsense we're going for here uh, is that if this goes through and if he has one elaster he's gonna be able to pump it to match if he has two elasters I lose <laughs> I know one card in his hand is a whip tail so if the other one is another elaster hey we got game <laughs> well shit all right that one was a bit that one was a bit cringeworthy. That one was, was a bit skin of my teeth. Uh, but thank God these tokens can attack. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to win that one at all. Um, I didn't think that one was winnable. Um, in, until I drew that power spot. That power spot was the card that made me win this game. Let's not even pretend that power spot wasn't the card that just caused me to win this game. Because it 100% was. Without power spot, I would have had to activate my card, and then it would have just gotten negated and banished by Makaba, and then we would have been up shit creek without a paddle. I'm so glad that he actually realized that he shouldn't have negated the Aratama, though. So glad that he realized that, because, like, he saw two ritual monsters go to my hand last turn, so if he had negated the Aratama with Makaba, then I would have just summoned a ritual monster for free and bounced. So I'm so glad that he actually uh, caught that. But anyway... That is it for this one. This video is a bit long, and it's live commentary, so whatever. Some people seem to miss it, so I guess I'll do it every once in a while uh, just to appease you guys and to do a longer video for the sake of doing longer videos and also just for doing more thought process in the games. But anyway, I really like this deck. I really like the way it plays. I really like how it's oriented, um, and just leave your feedback down below, and if you want to see me play more this deck more, if you want to see me do more videos with this deck, then definitely like the video to show your support. If this deck, if this video gets, uh, if this video gets a lot of likes, then I'll know that that's the kind of things that you want to see more of, um, is, as opposed to things like Zoo in everything, or Invoked in everything. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links are in the description to my Facebook, as well as my Patreon page, if you want to go there and support me directly, help make some future projects more viable for the channel, help improve my gear, help like basically guarantee that I'm going to be live streaming at least once or twice a week. And if you want to enter into a monthly giveaway raffle, I don't know what the end of this month's giveaway is going to be, uh, but it's going to be some form of, you know, high dollar Konami product or maybe just a high dollar card that I raffle away. But if you want are if you want to and are interested in, in any of those uh, aspects, whether it's supporting me or getting in on the monthly giveaway or getting onto my Discord server to chat with me on a daily basis like uh, Iradium over here was, then, uh, then you could definitely go check that out. But other than that, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know what your feedback is and all that um, as for the deck and stuff like that. And let me know if you want to see more Shino Birds in action because I do really like playing this deck. I really like the demographic of Ritual Spirits. I really love it. I love ritual-based decks in general, and Spirits are always a really interesting mechanic. And so, something I've just always wanted to play around with. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. As I've already said, thanks for your time. As usual, thanks for watching. And take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.